The veto power of the United Nations Security Council is the most controversial and heavily criticized aspect of the UN Security Council. Afforded to the five permanent members under Article 27, Section 3 of the Charter of the United Nations, it allows China, Russia, the USA, UK and France to quash any non-procedural resolutions regarding the maintenance of international peace and security with their negative vote. There are three main issues with this. Firstly, this veto power is irrespective of the level of international support for the resolution or the unanimity of the rest of the Council. Secondly, this leads to many other countries to label the veto power as anachronistic, undemocratic and a tool of coercion unjustified in the 21st century. Thirdly, many have advocated for a reform of the veto power, signifying that there is an underlying issue and power imbalance. While it is unlikely that the veto power will ever be abolished, it is arguable that it should be subject to qualifications for a number of reasons. Firstly, an unqualified veto undermines the sovereign equality of states. Secondly, it enables the permanent members to protect their own and their allies and interests at the expense of maintaining peace and security. Thirdly, it allows the permanent members to avoid being subjected to the Council's governance. Fourthly, it has contributed to the inability of the Council to respond effectively to major conflicts. Fifthly and finally, the unqualified veto power has allowed a number of humanitarian crises to continue without the Council's intervention, such as the Rwanda genocide. The veto power has been a central feature of the operation of the UN Security Council ever since the Council's formation in 1946. With the exception of China and Russia, the veto power was awarded to the main victors of World War II, France, USA and the UK. The first veto was cast in 1946 by Russia, and since then it has been used collectively by the five nations over 260 times to quash any non-procedural draft resolutions put forward in the Security Council. The initial reason for the inclusion of this power as a feature of the Council was to prevent the UN from taking any direct action against its founding members or their interests. The drafters of the Charter assumed that the permanent five members were to be chiefly responsible for maintaining peace and defeating global aggressors, and therefore ought to control the use of the UN forces. Moreover, it was vital that these countries did not opt out of the new organisation, as they had done with the failed League of Nations decades earlier. To that end, the veto power reassured the governments of these countries that, in matters of war and peace, their interests would not be overruled. However, the unpopularity of the veto power soon began to emerge. In the 1990s, 185 UN member states of the UN criticised the veto as inequitable, and such criticism has not subsided. The existence of an unqualified veto has been heavily criticised by many states on the basis that it undermines the principles of sovereign equality and democracy and international law. The veto is seen as undemocratic because it confers considerable power and privileges on certain countries, the five permanent members. It can act as a negotiation advantage and an instrument of pressure, allowing the permanent members to dominate the UN. The inequity that the veto creates is also highlighted by the fact that it allows permanent members to protect their own and their allies and their interests, even if it is contrary to the maintenance of peace and security. For example, Israel has been shielded from UN condemnation and economic sanctions numerous times because of the threat of the veto used by its ally, the USA. China has also used its power to shield regimes such as those in Sudan and Myanmar from UN authorized action in the interest of preserving its economic ties. Both Russia and China continue to veto draft resolutions regarding the situation in Syria in order to protect the Syrian government, allowing human rights abuses to take place without the interference from the UN. The most famous failures of humanitarian aid by the UN was the case of the Rwandan genocide in 1994. Vetoes by France and the USA prevented the UN from sending any robust aid in the form of military support for the president of Rwanda, who was subsequently killed. The practical effect of the absolute veto power is that it subjects some member states to the law, while placing the permanent member states above the international law. The permanent member states are able to operate largely free of, from UN control and governance, since their negative vote can prevent the operation of the UN enforcement system against them.
This results in them being unaccountable to the UN and immune from formal condemnation. In conclusion, the veto power of the UN Security Council undermines the international law, as the process allows for five countries to effectively control the UN intervention in international conflicts, economic sanctions, and humanitarian issues. International law should be to protect nations, where human rights abuses and conflicts are attended to by the United Nations. However, the veto power prevents the successful implementation of international law from taking place.